So what is up guys, Soon to the Sabs back and today we are here with NFL Week 5 Predictions. I keep making these every week, they, they're always fun, but I want to go back to last week because last week was one of my worst weeks in terms of predictions. I went 8 for 15, that was, that was bad. My accuracy was way off, like there were, but last week was kind of like the week of upsets, I mean I made a few idiotic picks like picking the Bengals over the Steelers. But anyways, enough about that. We are here going into week five. So without further ado, let's get these predictions. All right, so of course we're going to start with a Thursday night football matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. Now this match actually looks really exciting. After seeing last year, the Rams and Seahawks always had some of the best games against each other. So this should be fun. So starting off with the Rams, they came off a 55-40 to loss against the Buccaneers. And the Seahawks came off a 27-10 to win over the Cardinals. Starting off with the Rams, what the hell was last week? Last week was terrible. Like, offense, the offense was there, but your defense against the Buccaneers, like, I know Jameis Winston's a decent quarterback, but the fact that you didn't, you guys got a decent defense, but you couldn't stop Jameis Winston. He turns the ball over, like, every other time, and yet you only picked him off once. Uh, the rushing game was very limited, but Chris Godwin ran all over you. And in terms of offense, your offense was amazing, but Jared Goff went back to being a rookie. Four turnovers, three picks, and a fumble. Like, that is always very questionable. I mean, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, Brandon Cooks did their things, played amazing. But anyways, let's move on to the Seattle Seahawks. They won 27-10 to over the Cardinals. That's not that much of an accomplishment. The Cardinals are terrible. Their defense got picked apart by Russell Wilson and Chris, Chris Carson and Will Disley. Those were the three big guys on offense. In terms of defense, you know, you kept them to a touchdown and a field goal, and the touchdown was on a rushing one, a rushing touchdown from Kyler Murray. Uh, you kept them to 241 yards, and you picked them off once for a pick six on a nice one-handed catch by Jadavion Clowney. So, if I got to pick a winner for this one, you know, this could go either way. But I'm going to say the Seahawks are going to win this one because they're playing at home. I'm saying CenturyLink Field is just going to cause too many problems for the Rams. Seahawks win. And now you get to our very next matchup between the New York Jets and the Philadelphia Eagles. There's not much I can say about this. Eagles are going to win it. But I will go into it. So the Jets last week, they were on their bye week. They didn't play, and that's a good thing because, well, Darnold is still out with mononucleosis. You're not getting Trevor Simeon back. So Luke Falk is your current quarterback. Honestly, don't know. That's terrible. Luke Falk as your quarterback is one of the worst situations to have. I know there's Le'Veon Bell, but he doesn't have the same kind of O-line as what the Steelers had, so he's obviously his he's downgraded a little bit. And um, the defense, you know, they're still a good defensive unit, but they've had to play some very tough competition, mainly the Patriots, the Bills, and, uh, you know, that's about it. Oh, and also the Browns. And that's about it. So then you move on to the Eagles, who won a very clutch game against the Packers, 34-27. You know, Carson Wentz threw for 160 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, that's not too bad, but Wentz didn't have to do too much on offense as Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders ran for over 150 yards. They got it done on the ground as well. Um, going back to it, you know, your receivers did themselves a good job. Zach Ertz was your main weapon, seven receptions, 65 yards. Now, I know your defense is not good, I get that, but you played clutch. You made them fumble once, which set you up in perfect field territory. And I know the Packers, they called four straight passes, but you stopped them on the one five times. Five times you stopped them on the one. That is clutch, and of course, Eagles will win this game handily. And now you have our very next match between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Carolina Panthers. Took me a little while to say that, but I forget about that. Anyways, so the... The Jaguars came off a 26-24 victory over the Denver Broncos last week, and the Panthers came off a 16-10 victory over the Houston Texans. Starting off with the Jaguars, Gardner Minshew II. What a legend this guy is. I mean, he did throw 213 yards, two touchdowns, but he was incredibly clutch in the final quarter, uh, but the real contributor to the team last week was Leonard Fournette. 29 carries for 225 yards. I mean, the receivers did okay, but it was all in Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette basically carried you guys to a victory. Gardner Minshew did what he did and didn't turn over the ball. You guys won handily over the Broncos. I mean, not handily. It came down to a last-second field goal. 
But, uh, yeah, that's about it about the Jaguars. And then the Carolina Panthers, you came off a 16-10 victory over the Texans. Christian McCaffrey did his things, got over 170 scrimmage yards. Uh, Kyle Allen actually looks not pretty decent. He threw for 232 yards and no touchdowns, but no picks at the same time. Uh, but C-Mac is literally all you guys. You stopped a high-flying offense in the Houston Texans, you know. Uh, Deshaun Watson, you limited him to 160 yards. DeAndre Hopkins only got five receptions for 41 yards. Your defense has been able to be very clutch. A uh, funny thing, going back to the Jaguars, Gardner Minshew II, the, the ultimate meme now, apparently has a completion percentage of 69.420. That's amazing, and I think the Jaguars are going to stop Kyle Allen's little winning streak. So, Jaguars win this game. And now you have our very next match between the Minnesota Vikings and the New York Giants. So, the Vikings came off a 16-6 loss against the Chicago Bears, and the New York Giants came off a 24-3 victory against... The Washington Redskins. Sorry about the, starting off with the Vikings. Man, what the hell? What the hell is wrong with you guys? Like, I know your defense is supposed to be one of the better defensive units in the game, but you guys got picked apart by Chase Daniel. Chase Daniel ran ran the Bears offense better than Mitch Trubisky has this entire season. 195 yards and a touchdown. Uh, the rushing game, you know, the Vikings you limited them, but going back, your offense is concerning because Kirk Cousins once again is terrible. Like, he is now, here's 84 million reasons why the Vikings are in trouble. Because of Kirk Cousins. That's all 84 million reasons. Dalvin Cook was very limited. Only 35 rushing yards and a touchdown. Diggs broke out for 108 yards. Uh, Thielen was limited to only 6 yards. Like, I know the O-line could have played better, but you're facing the Bears. Best front seven in the league. Or one of them. And anyways, then you go into the Giants, you know, they came off a victory over the Redskins. That's not much of an accomplishment. You know, you picked them off four times, but most of them was because of their receivers, and that's about it. Daniel Jones threw 225 yards, a touchdown, but two picks. So, obviously, he's starting to get that Eli Manning sense in him, throwing picks. Uh, the rushing game, you know, Wayne Gallum is not Saquon, but he did get uh, nearly 120 scrimmage yards, so that's... Very good. Evan Ingram was another good weapon. Same with Sterling Shepard. If I want to pick a winner for this one, I'm going to go with the Giants on this one. I just still have no trust in Kirk Cousins. And now you have our very next match between the Atlanta Falcons and the Houston Texans. Uh, the Falcons came off a 24-10 loss against the Titans, and the Texans came off a 16-10 loss against the Carolina Panthers. Now, honestly, both for both these teams, giant alarm bells sh should be ringing. You know, Matt Ryan, you know, he had himself a decent game, 30, uh, 35 for 53, 397 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. But other than that, your rushing game was limited. Devontae Freeman didn't get much done on the ground, but he did get a lot done in the air for 72 reception yards. Austin Hooper and Mohamed Sanu combined for over 200 reception yards. Uh, your defense got picked apart by Marcus Mariota and Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown and Corey Davis. So, honestly, alarm bells should be ringing since the Titans are such an inconsistent squad. And you have the um, Houston Texans. Uh, Deshaun Watson did not have himself a very good game. The rushing game, you know, they got over 100 yards on rushing, but that was about it. DeAndre Hopkins, their top receiver, only got 41 yards. Once again, giant alarm bells should be ringing. Uh, your defense, you know, you guys fell apart to Kyle. I know you guys, you fell apart to Christian McCaffrey, which is understandable, but also you fell apart to Kyle Allen. Once again, all our bells, ring, 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 and uh, look. Like, and also DeAndre Hopkins got one throw that he threw for a pick. That was not good. But anyways, both these teams are in a very bad position, but if I'm going to pick a winner for this one, I don't know, man. I don't know who to go with, but I'm going to go with the Texans. And then you have our very next matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and my, and my boys in the New Orleans Saints. The Buccaneers came off a 55-40 victory over the LA Rams, and the New Orleans Saints came off a 12-10 victory over the Cowboys. Now, starting off, uh, the Buccaneers played very well last week against a team like the Rams. You know, they picked apart their secondary. Winston threw for 385 yards. Ronald Jones got 70 rushing yards and a touchdown. Chris Godwin is better, had a better game than Mike Evans, even though both of them combined for nearly, for over 250 uh, receiving yards. I was just insane with the show that they put on. And the last time Jameis Winston actually did step in and play started in the Superdome, he did his little IEW speech and went like, I, all I eat is W's! W's all day! 
He did not eat a W. He ate a W last week. Never did it in the Dome, but will he eat the W this week? Definitely not, because he's facing the Saints, who came off a big win against the Cowboys. Like, look, we needed to beat the Cowboys. We needed to make all you NFL people know that they play, they play garbage teams. Make all the Cowboy fans realize that they, they played nothing but garbage. Play a real team, you lost. Teddy Bridgewater, he threw 193 yards, uh, no touchdowns and a pick, but the pick was because it went up because Ted Ginn Jr. wasn't able to make the catch. Uh, as always, Alvin Kamara did his things, nearly got 100 scrimmage yards. Michael Thomas, nine receptions, 95 yards. The defense was met, was amazing, limiting um, Ezekiel Elliott to 35 yards. I mean, the Cowboys didn't play too smart because you got to beat him in the air. But, of course, Marshawn Lattimore did an amazing job at defending Amari Cooper last week. Uh, there was, and uh, we did get the one pick at the end of the game by Marcus Williams. Uh, if I'm going to pick a winner for this one, it's going to be the Saints, because Jameis Winston will start throwing interceptions again. And now you have our very next match between the Buffalo Bills and the Tennessee Titans, a rematch of the music of the time the Music City Miracle happened. Uh, Bills lost to the Patriots 16-10, to and the Titans beat the Falcons 24-10. to now, this, now, last week was basically like a test for the Bills, their biggest test, facing the Pats. And, you know, they made it competitive. Offensively, they were terrible. Both teams did not get anything going on offense. And on defense, well, that's where they really shine. But Josh Allen threw for 153 yards, no touchdowns, and three picks. Now he's in concussion protocol, and now they're starting Matt Barkley, who threw a pick. And anyways, guys like Frank Gore, he ran for 109 yards. You know, you did limit Tom Brady to only 150 yards. You picked him off once. So it was kind. It was a bit of a loss for the pay, for the Bills because well, it was a huge loss. They lost the Patriots, but to be at the same time, you made it competitive, but it's not going to get you too far. Like you guys need to. Josh Allen's decision making was terrible last week, and then you have the Tennessee Titans. You know, Marcus Mariota had himself a decent game, two hundred twenty-seven yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Derrick Henry ran for just about a hundred yards. A.J. Brown and Corey Davis lit up the um, Falcons secondary, or what's left of it, because Keanu O'Neill's not there, for just about 185 yards. So they played a very good game on offense. Defense, you know, they stuffed the rushing game, and they stopped Matty Ice. Let them score one touchdown and kick one field goal. Very good game played, but if I'm going to pick one of this one, I think Matt Barkley will... Shock us all and beat the Titans. And now you have our very next match between the Arizona Cardinals and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Cardinals came off a 27-10 loss against the Seahawks, and the Bengals came off a 27-3 loss against the Steelers. Both these teams haven't won a game yet, but Kyler, so getting there, Kyler Murray last week didn't do too well. Um, still behind one of the worst O-lines in the league, threw for 241 yards and a pick. He did get a rushing touchdown, though, but only 27 yards... Or, <coughs> Only 27 rushing yards. Uh, David Johnson very limited in the rushing game, but in receiving he got 99 reception yards, which was very good. Fitz and Christian Kirk were held by the Seahawks as you guys were defeated by Chris Carson and Will Disley and Jadavion Clowney. Then you move on to the Bengals, who played an absolutely horrific game against the Steelers as... Mason Rudolph had himself a decent game, but James Conner ran over your defense. That's about it. That's about as much as I can say. Dalton, he threw 171 yards on a pick. Mixon actually got a bit of a rushing game going for 62 yards, but you guys will be without John Ross for the next game, which is definitely a tough loss. But you will have Tyler Boyd, who has been like your big wide receiver this year. If i got to pick a winner for this one, I'm going to go with the Cardinals. And then you have our very next match between the New England Patriots and the Washington Redskins. No competition, but the Redskins, they lost to the Giants 24-3, to and the Patriots beat the Bills 16-10. to Bills, uh, Patriots, the fact that you're 4-0 and about to be 5-0 absolutely disgusts me. You guys have faced nothing but garbage teams, and you guys don't deserve to be 5-4-0. Like, sure, your defense has played well, but you've had no competition. Brady threw for 150 yards in a pick last game. The rushing game was limited to under 80 yards. The receiving game didn't do too much. Buffalo has them so have a very good defense, but your defense just played better as you made the Bills turn the ball over four times. And the Redskins, well, you guys, seriously. Case Keenum went 6 for 11 through 37 yards and a pick. So, of course, you get Dwayne Haskins, who only threw 107 yards and three picks. 
Not an ideal situation. The only way that this situation can get resolved is if you guys fire Dan Snyder and then you fire Jay Gruden. Because the rushing game was limited and you guys got picked up and you guys got destroyed by the Giants defense. Their defense is terrible. So, of course, Patriots are winning this game. And now you have our very next matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Ravens came off a 40-25 loss against the Browns. And the Steelers came off a 27-3 victory over the Bengals. Now, you got, now to the Ravens, you guys play decently. And Lamar Jackson had himself uh, 274 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. He's starting to get back into that form of being a running back. You know, Mark Ingram didn't have as much of a breakout week. Oh, you guys got picked apart by Baker Mayfield and Nick Chubb. Not much to say about that. Your defense was just terrible. Uh, your receivers were okay, but your defense was your biggest weakness of last week. And then you have the Steelers who beat the Bengals. Not much of an accomplishment. The Bengals are terrible. Mason Rudolph did have 229 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. James Conner only 42 rushing yards, but he did follow up with 83 rushing yards. So getting over 120 scrimmage yards, very good game. Jalen Samuels only got 26 rushing yards, but a touchdown. And he barely cracked 80 rushing, 80 um, scrimmage yards. <coughs> but it was really your running backs that got all the yardage because Juju didn't do too much, and that's really all I can say. If i got to pick a winner for this one, uh, the Steelers, I don't think are going to win this one. I think the Ravens will end up winning. And now you have our very next matchup between the Chicago Bears and the Oakland Raiders. Khalil Mack is returning to play against the Raiders. Except it's not being played in Oakland, it's being played across the Atlantic Ocean in London. And it's a 1 o'clock game, not a 9 o'clock game. Just to reiterate. So anyways, the Bears came off a 16-6 victory over the Vikings, and the Raiders came off a 31-24 victory over the Colts. So starting off with the Bears, you know, you guys did a good job last week. You know, your front seven just toyed with Kirk Cousins and Dalvin Cook. Limiting Cook to 35 yards is amazing. Kirk Cousins didn't get anything going. You stopped feeling. You stopped all their big guys except Diggs. That's okay. Your offense looked a lot better under Chase Daniel, which is a point of concern to me because Trubisky is, has a lot more upside, but Chase Daniel just played better. And anyways, then you move on to Raiders and Colts. I mean, the Raiders, you know, you came off a victory over the Colts. You stopped Jacoby Brissett as he threw for three touchdowns and a pick. Uh, you limited their rushing game, which was very good. Carr threw for 189 yards and two touchdowns. Your defense played very well. Uh, Jake, Josh Jacobs only got 79 rushing yards, but that's okay. As he got over 100 scrimmage yards, you know, you guys actually played a very good game. I mean, you may be without Burfecht for the season, but that's okay. Burfecht needs to needs to go and for a winner for this game it's going to be the bears and now you have our very next match between the denver broncos and the los angeles chargers the broncos came off a 26 to 24 loss against the jaguars and the chargers came off a 30 to 10 victory over the dolphins broncos you guys are screwed your own four uh joe flacco they're for 303 yards three touchdowns and a pick he actually had a decent game uh, your rushing game was good uh, your big guys, Emmanuel Sanders and Cordell Sutton, played well, but you guys are supposed to have one of the best pass-rushing duos in the NFL in Chubb and Miller, and yet you guys got torn apart by Leonard Fournette and Gardner Minshew. I mean, Minshew I'm not criticizing, but seriously, Fournette, guy ran for 225 yards. Once again, alarm bells should be ringing. Ring, 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 ring. And uh, anyways, uh, going over to the Chargers, you know, I know they did face the uh, Miami Dolphins, but any win's a win. Uh, Phillip Rivers threw for 310 yards, two touchdowns. Eckler torched the Dolphins for over 120 scrimmage yards. Uh, not much can be said about their performance, their defense. Well, you're stopping the Dolphins, not really much of an accomplishment. But Austin Eckler's might be seeing less playing time since um, Melvin Gordon is coming back got to pick a winner for this one. It's going to be the Chargers. And then you have our very next match between the Dallas Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers. This is actually going to be such an exciting matchup. First off, the Packers lost to the Eagles 34-27. And then the Cowboys lost the Saints 12-10. So the Packers, look, you guys played a very good game last week. Aaron Rodgers was amazing. 422 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. 
Uh, your rushing game didn't do too much. Devontae Adams was amazing, but he will be out this week with turf toe. Um, your defense, you know, you fell apart to the Eagles. And to be honest, if you guys want to win, run the fucking ball on the one-yard line. I'm being serious. Like, if you ran it both those times, you would have won the game, hands down. But of course, you, but of course you passed all the time, and you lost. And then you have the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, you guys did not play well. Like, you, you've you been facing garbage teams, and now you actually got exposed by the real team in New Orleans. Uh, Dak Prescott threw 223 yards on a pick. Ezekiel Elliott was limited to 35 yards. Uh, you guys had two horrible fumbles, which led to the Saints' success. But anyways, why didn't you guys pass the ball more? Like, I know our secondary is bad, but we usually click after a couple games. But the secondary, of course, Marshawn Lattimore was able to cover Amari Cooper well enough so he couldn't get any receptions. But honestly, you guys are going to want to pass this. And if I want to pick a winner for this one, as always, the Packers will come out against the Cowboys on top. So Packers win this game. And then you have our Sunday night football matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the Colts came off a 31-24 loss against the Raiders, and the Chiefs came off a 34-30 victory against the Lions. Now, starting off with the Colts, uh, you know, you played an okay game, but you guys fell apart at the worst time possible. Jacoby Brissett, you know, threw for 265 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. Uh, Marlon Mack couldn't get anything going. Uh, you know, your, your secondary fell apart to the Raiders of all teams. Uh, mainly Joshua Jacobs, Trevor Davis, and Derek Carr. Uh, the Colts, you know, you made it close, but just made one bad move at the wrong time. And then you have the Chiefs, who, well, they were trying to hand the Lions victory. Like, the Lions played themselves a very good game, but, of course, you your defense somehow played better. Mahomes threw for 315 yards and threw no touchdowns. LaShawn McCoy, 56 yards and a touchdown. Patrick, uh, you guys combined for over 100 rushing yards. Mahomes had 54. Clutch final quarter drive. You know, your receivers, they did well. I mean, none of them got a touchdown, but this game, you stopped them on defense, got a 100-yard return, defensive return for a touchdown. So, if I want to pick a winner for this game, I am going to go with the Chiefs. Like, if this... If Andrew Luck didn't retire, this match would be exciting. But it's still going to be exciting, just not as. So Chiefs will win this game. And now you have our final matchup of the week, which is the Monday Night Football matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the San Francisco 49ers. The Browns came off a 40-25 victory against the Ravens, and the 49ers were on their bye week. So they didn't play last week, and now I'm going to go over what happened. So starting it off, you know, the Browns, they won against the... Ravens, you know, you stopped Lamar Jackson. Your defense was able to pick him off twice. Uh, Baker Mayfield threw for 324 yards, a touchdown and a pick. But the game was all Nick Chubb. 20 carries, 165 yards, and three touchdowns. Your team looked very good last week. Um, not much else I can say except because you completely embarrassed the Ravens defense, showing how good your offense really is. I mean, OBJ did not have himself a great game to reception for 20 yards. But aside from that, you guys played well. And then you have the 49ers. These guys are still undefeated, but I don't think they really deserve to be undefeated. Jimmy Garoppolo has, even though he's paid like a superstar, but he's been very mediocre this season. Throwing a lot of touchdowns, but he's also been throwing a lot of picks. You know, the defense has been very good this week. Um, you guys, as I said, you're lucky to be 3-0. <coughs> I pull up last your last match, you know. You turned the ball over five times, so that's got to change. But you still won, so... Yeah. You guys got to work on turnovers. You know, your defense is still very good, but offense is super questionable. Want to pick a winner for this one? I'm going with the Cleveland Browns. And that is my video for today. Thank you guys all so much for watching. So, of course, you noticed that the Dolphins and the Lions make any predictions while they're on their bye week. Anyways, but once again, thank you all for watching. If you want to see all my other prediction videos, links will be in the description below. If you want to see my MLB postseason predictions video, which I recently released for the postseason, Link's also going to be in the description below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, comment down below what else you want to see. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Snapchat at Savage. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Have a very good day. Peace.